Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Solar, Solar Project. Project. And this is my daughter, Angela Summers. And this is my dad, Craig Wolf. It's time to play a new game. It's decision time on climate. That's the topic of today's video. So, let's get going. Thank you to Greg Craven, who started the concept you're about to see. Now, if you feel that the Solar Project YouTube channel is making a meaningful effort in stopping and reversing the climate emergency, then please subscribe. And don't forget, click the notification bell, and you can subscribe right here. How are we, as a species, ever going to finally decide about climate change? Is the science real? Are humans to blame? What if our weather changes a little bit? What's the worst that could happen? Well, the worst might be never before seen droughts, extinctions, civilization collapse. Basically a Mad Max world with the survival of the fittest in the hands of the meanest, smartest cutthroats left on the planet. Well, I guess that is the worst that could happen. But we're going to look at other possible outcomes. Let's start with an important premise. That none of us is infallible. That in this planetary experiment, none of us can exactly predict what the future will bring. We simply must find a way to make the most reasonable decision that helps us by examining the nature of the risks involved. We want to choose the best option with the most reasonable amount of risk. So, let's play Decision Time on Climate. Let's create a decision grid that analyzes what happens if climate is real or if climate is not real. If we decide to take action or... Nah. Nah. Here's our decision grid. In the columns, we either take action on climate or we don't. And in the rows, Global warming proves to be real or proves to be not real. Let's start with, we take no action and global warming is a hoax. Well, that worked out pretty well. Should we stop there or keep going? Let's continue. With we actually do take action on the climate crisis and it's not real. Well... We wasted lots of money for something that was never going to happen. We generated burdensome regulations, bloated government. We spent so much money on something we didn't need and created an economic disaster. But on the plus side, our air is clean, our water is clean, and our environment is much safer. Going on, let's look at we take action and the climate crisis proves to be a real emergency. Wow, looks like we dodged a real bullet. We avoided all of the scary things we discussed earlier, and we still have cleaner air and water and a safer environment. Not to mention creating thousands and thousands of jobs as industries retool for a clean, safe, and renewable energy future. And because climate solutions deal with more than energy alone, there are many other byproducts that create a more equitable future for all of us. Like better education for young women, better family planning, and a more sustainable environment for all species, including ours. Okay, now for the scary box where we decide climate change is not a hoax and we took no action, but we were wrong. Climate proved to be a real disaster, a global catastrophe, and here are some of the worst things that could happen. Wildfires. Floods and mudslides. Species extinction. Drought. Storm damage. Dying coral. 
Infrastructure loss. Climate refugees. Political instability. Melting glaciers. Famine. Water scarcity. Ecosystem loss. Sea level rise. Infectious diseases. Our way of life. And, and much, much, much more. more. The real benefit of this decision grid is that we are examining our risk of decisions. In our analysis, we are required to evaluate the severity of these risks as well as the likelihood that our climate is indeed changing based upon the evidence we can find. For the latter, 97% of peer-reviewed papers by scientists agree that global warming is happening and that humans are the cause. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres described the October 2018 report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Crisis, the IPCC, this way. This report by the world's leading climate scientist is an ear-splitting wake-up call to the world. It confirms that climate change is running faster than we are, and we are running out of time. In our decision-making process, we are charged with evaluating the evidence. I don't know about you, but I find it virtually impossible to claim that there is no basis for concern about the future of our planet's climate. Unless you believe the world is flat as a pancake or claim that all science is fake news, the is climate change is real row on our grid must be, at a minimum, taken seriously. Now, about those pesky columns for what we decide to actually do, take action or no action, what is the worst case scenario with those decisions? If we take action, we will indeed need to spend trillions of dollars to stop the worst catastrophe ever faced by mankind. It requires that all nations immediately join together in a never-before-seen effort. The results will usher in into a far more healthy and equitable future. In the no action column, I can't imagine that any sane person looking at the relative risk involves with the take action, don't take action options, could possibly feel comfortable with the no action decision. What would be the cost if we were wrong? The risks of taking no action far outweigh the risks of taking action. In the game of avoiding risk, which is the more acceptable risk? What is the wisest path to take? Remember, in this planetary experiment, we are the experiment. Is describing the threat to the planet and civilization overblown? I guess that depends on who you ask. I prefer to lean on scientific institutions rather than the Flat Earth Society. If you disagree, can you be so certain that you are willing to risk everything? Remember, we only get one chance to run this experiment. And thanks to our sponsors, the Heartland Renewable Energy Society, working every day for a clean, safe, renewable energy future. And we are in partnership with the Climate Council of Greater Kansas City, a technology hub for organizations resolved to solving the climate crisis in a world of just, sustainable communities living in harmony with the Earth's natural systems. And we will see you next week.